Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back once again to TransWest Truck Trailer RV. My name's Mark Love, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you a brand new Numar. This is a 3727 model, uh, 2024, and I actually love this color. This is the Gotham exterior, and you know, I always go for good looking blue. D did I just say go blue? So oh, sorry about that, especially you Michigan State fans like my brother. Uh, anyway, Gotham interior, great looking paint job. The uh, Superstars are built on a Freightliner M2 chassis with a 360 horse engine. And let's talk a little bit about that first. Um, if you're the kind of guy that likes to do your own maintenance, uh, change oil and filters and so forth, this is the engine for you. It's easy to get into, or this chassis actually uh, makes it easy for the do-it-yourselfer. You can see all your fluids here, your uh, air cleaner, uh, coolant, easy to access. Uh, got a little gauge here. This actually tells us how clogged our air filter is getting. If you come on around on the other side, uh, one of the things I like to demonstrate is how easy it is for somebody my size to get in here and work on the engine. And with the wheel turn like this, you can see I can step right up here, uh, get to my water separator, power steering fluid, uh, transmission oil, dipsticks right here. It's all real accessible. And one thing I wanted to mention about this 360 horse Cummins, there's a little bit of confusion because they actually make the 360 in the ISB, they call it the 6.7 liter. This is a 360 horse 8.9 liter engine, uh, the ISL. And the big difference is in your torque. On that 6.7 engine, a 360 horsepower is gonna give you about eight or 850 foot pounds of torque. On this 8.9 engine, same horsepower, but you get 1,150 foot-pounds of torque. And that's what really makes a difference. That's why they can rate this for 20,000 pounds of towing, even though it's only a 360 horse engine. And uh, another thing that's nice, if, if you're in here working on it and the wind kicks up, at least it's not gonna slam down on you too hard. It's got the uh, damper units there. Makes it close nice and soft. Okay. Let's go back around the other side and, and do a quick walk around of the compartments. First of all, you do have fuel fills on both sides. Unlock this compartment and you can put your uh, diesel fuel in. Def, you only fill from the driver's side. This has got the 360 surround camera, so right here is one of our side monitors. You also have one on the back. This first compartment here, not a real deep one, but one thing of note to look at, over here this red line, that's actually a hot water line and you've got a spigot down there. So if you are out ATV in or something, you wanna wash it off, you've got hot wires or hot water, but more importantly, uh, you take your hose, you can wash off your windshield with hot water and after driving all night in the bugs, that's really convenient. Down here in the second compartment, a little bit larger and you can see how nicely finished they are, felt lined in here. A couple of accessories that you get, this is an air hose. You've got a compressor, you've got a quick release chuck in the back, so they provide an air hose so, uh, you know, if you need to put air in your tires, uh, maybe you let the air out of your tires in your Jeep to go for a trail ride, you want to fill that back up. So that's a nice uh, extra. <laughs> right here we've got our um, hoses and attachments for our vacuum system. And the vacuum system's nice because you can use it outside and clean out your compartments. While I'm right here, I'll talk about Numar slides. And this is truly a flush wall slide. You can see how it tucks into the sidewall here as you're going down the road, especially the, the wind coming from the front. It's not being forced in around that seal. 
and that's where you pick up a lot of your road noise. It's actually from your slide outs, your doors, the wind noise can be just as loud as the road noise. So this is a true flush slide, they tuck inside, better seal, you don't get water driven in there, and you don't have the sound from it. So it's a really nice feature. Uh, let's move back to the compartments. And one other thing you'll know, here's a smaller compartment. When I open it, that LED light on there comes on automatically. Numar uh, changed the seal, made it a heavier seal. They've always made great doors, very thick, very well built and insulated, but sometimes it was harder to close them. Well, when they change that seal, it makes it super easy to shut these doors. Okay, in this compartment, we've got our outside TV. And this does pull out and it'll tilt for you. You've also got controls for your Bose sound bar here. And right here, we've got our, our fresh tank drain, and that's a nice size drain. Uh, it's got a 150 water tank, and if for some reason you had to drain that whole tank with a half inch or a one inch line, it would take quite a while. So they've got a nice drain right there. Let's move back to these uh, final two compartments. And this is one of the things that make the Superstar unique compared to most other uh, Super C models, you get some pass-through storage here. That's common in a Class A, but not in a Class C. Now this pull-out tray, it's actually about a three-quarter pull-out. You've gotten the component behind it, but you can see both below and up on top. You know, if you had uh, your fly rods or fishing poles that were extra long that you didn't want to break down, you could actually put them up there and, and travel with them. And then right here, as I mentioned, is your vacuum. So with, with it mounted out here, you've got attachments that work inside, but you can take that hose and you can vacuum out all these compartments. So after a day out in the sand, that's really convenient. This compartment here, not only does it have some pass through, you've got a light on the back, but you've got your release right here for the back. And again, the, the thing Numar does, they, they build it on the same chassis, but they do things a little bit different, and it actually gives you good storage here. You've got racks here for oil or, or tools or whatever you want to use it for, but more importantly, you can see how it passes through underneath. So some of your longer items, maybe tables or, or lawn chairs can fit in there. And then also, we see some of the components that come with our hitch. Now, first of all, we've got a three inch receiver on there. You may need to reduce it down to two inch, particularly, particularly if you're pulling with like a blue ox hitch, you'll want the two inch there. And then on this insert, you have both the two inch ball and the two and five sixteenths inch ball. Of course, there's your pin to pin them in. And then uh, also back here, Great looking rear cap. You can see one of the cameras for our uh, hitch or for our backup monitor. There's also another one up on top. Uh, down here we do have our seven way plug. And then we're also set up if you're pulling like a stacker trailer and you want to put a, another camera on it, you can set it up so you can watch both cameras in the cab. Okay. We move around to the driver's side. Again, these back two compartments, you can see how there's some pass through there. You do have a 30 amp plug here, stacker trailer, let's say, and you want to provide power for it, you've got a place to hook up your 30 amp right here. And then in this next compartment up, you can see we've got our Oasis Chinook. This is our Hydronic heating system, and uh, there's a couple of different models. But what makes the Chinook, in my opinion, a better unit, um, number one, it's quieter when it's running, and it burns cleaner so you don't get the, the diesel emissions. But this also has two electric elements and one diesel element. So on your chilly days, or once you have your water hot, your coach is warm, you can probably switch it to electric if you're in the 40s or 50s and it'll keep up without burning your diesel. Kind of a nice feature to having that extra element in there. And you know, one of the reasons Newmark chose this 
Uh, as I've said before, their slogan is when you know the difference. This is a little bit more expensive system, but there's a, a reasoning behind their uh, you know, madness of why they put these in. And like I say, the Chinook is a cleaner system, but well worth it. Okay, let's move up here. Got a little uh, storage compartment. And this cubby you might want to use for your uh, sewer hose or something like that. This model has an option for a macerator, but we did not put it on this one. Here at our water compartment, uh, 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 cover there, you can see we've got an outside shower, a whole house filter. Another feature here is we have electric valves for our black and gray tank. And by the way, you do have a 40 gallon black tank, 60 gallons of gray water, and 150 gallons of fresh water on this. And as you can see, the year where we've started winterizing, this winterization kit, you've got the easy uh, uh, valve. Ask your, your oasis or your water heater. It's easy to fill your alive. We also have a power uh, port our water hose here. Let me see. I'm looking for that button. There it is. Okay. Sorry if you can't hear me. Sometimes when I get in close here, it kind of muffles it from the, the uh, booth there. Um, but anyway, your main fill or sewer rinse, everything is a, in a convenient compartment. Uh, very well explained, low and uh, low point drains, very hot and cold water there. Let's move on down a little bit. Here we've got our hydraulic pump. Now this is for your levelers. Uh, these slides are a, a cog driven slide, so that's going to be primarily for your levelers. And you see it is on a pull out tray. Over here we have our inverter, 2800 watt inverter, and our 50 power cord. This is a manual out, and it's a power back in. In the winter, when it's cold and you have to rewind that cord, that's a great benefit, because they can be like wrestling an anaconda. Also, uh, we do have an input right here if you uh, are at a park that has local cable you can bring it in right there you also see your transfer switch and a surge protector in the back there 8000 watt diesel generator you can probably hear it running uh, they're not very loud and it supplies everything to run the two air conditioners the microwave everything you would want uh, you know when you're out dry camping and then these are our eight AGM uh, house batteries, or six volt golf cart style batteries. That tells me that we've got an all electric coach. There is a, uh, a uh, residential refrigerator and an induction cook surface. There's no propane with this coach. If you come around here, I just want to point out a couple of things about the driver door. I, I like the fact there's grab handles, there's places for people to get up. If you're not that tall, sometimes you're stretching, but it makes it very easy for me to get in here. Another thing that's different, you can see this right here, and I'll point it out inside, it's a baffle system. They isolate the cab from the house. So as you're going down the road, they do kind of move separately, makes for a bit of a smoother ride. And while we're right here, it's a lot easier to show that we have air ride seats. So you can air them up, uh, set it wherever you want once you're in there. They're also heated seats. And this is your lumbar support right there. Kind of hard to show that when we get inside. If you look straight down here also, this is where our chassis battery disconnect is. So 
when you're done putting it away after your trip, remember to shut those off. It's real uh, convenient. Another thing, these are breakaway mirrors. So if you're, uh, and this just happened to me, I was kind of in a, a dry wash where I camped to watch the eclipse last week with a friend and the trees going in were pretty tight and it hit my mirror, oops, and snapped it in like that. But you know, it saves you from having to replace a mirror. Hopefully your uh, antenna there doesn't slap the roof too hard. But these are very heavy duty, but they're breakaway and that's a really nice feature. Let's go ahead and step inside and take a look at the floor plan. I have learned never let the camera follow me up the stairs. <laughs> okay. You can probably tell now with the door shut, you barely hear that generator. And I wanted to leave these slides in to show you what it's like when you travel, how much room you've got. If you have, you know, a couple of kids that are going to sit at the table or play a game, maybe you've got a dog that's going to wander through to the bed. But it's very easy to get all the way through. I can access both sides of my refrigerator. Pull my freezer out if you need to get a popsicle or something. And then this is our bathroom. And the way they hinge this in the middle, it makes it easier if you're a large person to get in and out of that. And we'll show you more about that when we uh, get things opened up. So as long as we're right here, let me go over a couple of the controls. Right here we have our master uh, shut off, our battery disconnects, compartment door locks. This is a nice feature. It's a step cover. And, uh, you know, if you're traveling with a dog or something, you don't want them to fall down in there. So kind of nice to have that. You also have a switch for your block heater, your outside lights. This is your uh, uh, awning. Now your awning, the Gerards R110. When I opened them, I actually turned my inverter on. And we really don't need it now, the generator's running, but I turned my inverter on, opened the awning, did a few things, and all of a sudden the generator kicked on. I realized they had the auto gen start set for about 12.1 volts. Drop below that so the generator started automatically, another really nice feature. Leveling jacks are right here. These are our monitors if you want to go through and check your batteries, what's on, and so forth. Uh, Right here we've got our Oasis control and I was explaining that we've got two, you see the AC heat and that's not AC um, air conditioning, it's your AC current, but I can turn on AC1 or I can turn on AC1 and 2 and I could also turn on the diesel burner. So I could have two electric, one diesel burner on when I come in and it's really bitter cold and it's going to heat up fast. Like I say, when you're in medium temperatures, you know, mid, upper 40s, into the 50s, you probably can get away with just electrical once you've got things heated up. And then, of course, here's our slide out controls. I'll go ahead and run these out right now. And uh, I like the fact on the Numar, I can push them at the same time as they're going out. Now, this is the, uh, boy, is that the Remy interior? And it's got the toffee glazed maple cabinets. And I haven't done one of this color in a while. So now that we've got these out, I just want to talk about the interior. Uh, yeah, Remy is a decor. Let me get my Ottomans down. These are kind of nice because they do flip over and, you know, give you a solid surface if you want to put a plate there to hold it down. But again, what we've got in these cabinetries, it's the toffee glazed uh, maple hardwood with the high gloss finish. It's, it's a medium. It's not an extremely light, but it's not dark at all. And I've heard uh, 
some comments about Numars tend to look too Amish. Well, if that's what they mean, I'm okay with this. I like the window treatments. I like the color of this wood. Another feature that, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll have electric MCD saw, uh, shades, but I actually don't mind these manual ones because you very seldom have problems with them. And like I say, there's both the day and the night, so there's our day shade there. Um, you know, the fact it doesn't have the uh, macerator, it doesn't have the remote control shades, little things like this. If I was, you know, gonna live in a million dollar coach, I'd want all the luxuries. If I'm gonna pull stuff out to the desert or, you know, up into the mountains when I'm hunting or snowmobile, it's not the little accessories that are as important to me as the functionality of the coach. And this has got it both inside and out. A 3727, the overall length is 37 feet, 10 inches. You have 83 inches of headroom, so, you know, very large inside, but it's not so long that it's cumbersome to get it in and out of, uh, you know, campsites and when you go off road a little bit. Um, while we're here, I'll show you a few things up front. First of all, there's some storage compartment, and in this compartment right here, They've got some uh, numbers here, uh, one from Numar, one from Freightliner. This is the Numar specialist that you could talk to directly. One of three people will answer the phone. And also, it talks about Noogle. Noogle is like Numar's Google. If you want to look up the wiring specs for this coach, once you're an owner, you can uh, you know, join Noogle, you got to put your VIN in, and you can have access to every schematic about this coach. So if you're really a technical person, that's a nice thing to have. And one other thing while we're here I'll talk about, as far as after the uh, sales service, not only do you have these numbers to call direct, but we have a technical advisor, uh, his name's Bill, and probably the most knowledgeable person on all motorhomes going back you know, 30 years and longer. Uh, he's just a great guy, and if you're a customer of ours, you'll have his cell phone number. It's nice to know somebody can maybe help troubleshoot or walk you through something over the phone so you get that when you uh, purchase from TransWest. Okay, back to the coach. Got a couple more storage compartments up here. And I don't know what you'd put up here. People don't tend to use maps and things like that anymore, but you will find use for them, I assure you. Two more on this side. We do have the nice window, and there is a button. When I find it, I'll lower that shade. But this is the thing I mentioned outside, the baffle system, or it's the isolator between the coach and the cab. So as you're going down the road, if you have one foot in each, you'll feel them move kind of independently. Uh, gives you a little bit smoother ride. And since the Super C's only have the airbags in the back, shocks and leaf springs up front, that kind of helps. Uh, also, one of the reasons they give you the, uh, the air ride seats. Now, up here on the dash, uh, okay, a couple of things that, that I like to point out first, Let's get into our camera system. So this is the normal as you're looking out the back. A lot of times when you're driving, you might want the horizon on. You get sort of the, the broad view. But when I'm backing up, there's normal, and hooking up, I want to look right down on my hitch. If I had that insert in there, you'd see the ball. So you can line yourself up exactly with your trailer, even when you're by yourself. And then, of course, you also get the bird's eye view here. So kind of a, a shot down from above the camera. So you can see, you know, what's all the way around you. I don't think you use this a whole lot while you're driving. It's more while you're, while you're camped uh, in the campground. But you can go through the, the menu. You do have the, uh, the XM uh, radio. You can Bluetooth in your phone, navigation. Uh, once you go through this, it's telling us where we are. You put in your location. Very easy to navigate right here, uh, you know, from the dash. 
Also, another thing that I'll point out, I'm not going to go over all the controls, but you can lower your vehicle now. And the nice thing about that, again, when you're hooking up a trailer, you want to dump those uh, rear uh, shocks and get it as low as you can back under that hitch, hook up, and then let it pick up. Uh, this, you know, you really don't need, we don't have a, a tag axle, doesn't lock it in. Your forced regen, your, your battery boost here, gen start, you have some docking lights, cab lights, uh, so forth and this will uh, again when you're hooking up or if you want to dump your airbags before you level get it as low as you can so you've got a better chance of getting your coach level right there uh, this drops down and again it's an m2 chassis i like the allison six-speed transmission right here although all the class a's have it on the column i don't find this inconvenient at all or distracting when i'm maybe downshifting uh, as i'm going up a hill or something but very comfortable cab air ride seats uh you know notice this is a little different they give you access to some of your circuits now here but unless you know what you're doing you're not going to touch this this is really for the techs Okay. What is the gas mileage? Uh, good question. If, if you didn't hear that, somebody asked what the fuel mileage is. You know, eight is the average, is, you know, what you've got to tell everybody, whether it's diesel, gas. Uh, there are some factors. If you're in Colorado, you're probably always pulling a pass. And I'm averaging a little bit under eight, about 7.7. .7. Um, if you're on flat land, at sea level, you probably get a little better. If you hook up a, a, a tow vehicle that's only 2,500 pounds, that's not a lot. It's not going to uh, affect the gas mileage too much. But if you're pulling 20,000 pounds behind here, of course, that's going to affect it too. But on uh, most of these 8.9 engines, you can figure 7.5 to 8 is a good average. And downhill with the wind behind you and <laughs> all, the, uh, all the good luck in your favor, you might get eight and a half or nine. All right, uh, let's take a look at our floor plan. So over here is our dinette system and it's got the Euro boost set up. We do have some storage compartments on each side. We've got a place for video equipment there. While we're talking about video, I might as well bring my TV up, that's on a televator. These uh, each have a little storage under the bench. And you do have a leaf to extend this out, a couple of folding chairs if you have, you know, four or five people to get them around here. Across from the dinette, we've got our couch, and I will move these for now. I'm not going to pull it out, but I just wanted to show you, you do have a height of bed in here. So if you've got guests, you've got a full queen-size bed, uh, which is nice. Um, otherwise, you know, I like this setup with having the bed but having the Ottomans. I don't necessarily need a recliner to slouch in front of the TV and get comfortable, so this works perfect for me. Over here we've got three extremely deep cabinets and they're all open in here. You can see how convenient that is with longer items. This is your uh, mats for the cab area, your rug, and you've got a, a night uh, shade there, uh, a cover for the uh, cab area and they've got the nice hidden hinges and the uh, the struts very clean look with the hardware back here in the kitchen a little bit more storage now one thing about a 37 model you don't have as many cabinets for storage and in the kitchen that's maybe where you'll notice it a little bit Below there, we do have our dual stainless steel undermount sink. Very easy to wipe things in here, keep it clean. You do have a residential sprayer there. And I'm dripping antifreeze all over. <laughs> over here, we've got our induction cook surface. And uh, one thing, the back of these covers does have a little cutting board on it. So on your induction, 
any metallic pan. Anything a magnet will stick to will work. That includes your cast iron. And you can lift this all the way out, unplug it, take it out under your awning, plug it in, and cook out there on it if you'd like. Here's our convection microwave. And this coach is so brand new, it just arrived. We haven't even unpacked everything quite yet. Down below here, we've got our big silverware drawer. You see all your remotes. You do get some touch-up pain if you get a little scratch on the outside. Uh, you know, plenty of TV remotes, uh, sound bars. This is for your awning. Uh, one of the things I said about, you know, with the generator on, we can show you the dishwasher. This is 110, so you have to have the 110 power source. You actually can't run this off the inverter. Over here, we've got four more storage drawers, and all of these have the soft close feature to them. little spot here for you know dish soap or scrubbies or, or whatever and then a little more storage underneath room for a trash can you've got an extension right here and then beside the kitchen we have our 18 cubic foot residential style refrigerator so plenty of storage there. And then beside the refrigerator, we get the pantry space. And I like this because a lot of the shorter ones eliminate it or, you know, you have to use your cupboards. But you've got six nice full pull-out drawers here. So plenty of, of food for your, or room for your dry goods and, and food and stuff like that. Cross from... The refrigerator is our bathroom, and this is a single bathroom, so let me open up a couple of things and, and get you out of the way while you're looking around that, uh, if it'll stay open. I'll, I'll talk about the water miser, which is a feature in the shower there. Uh, you know, it doesn't make sense while you're waiting for the water to warm up in your shower to let it run and go down into your gray tank. Number one, you're using up your fresh water and you're filling your gray tank. So the water miser recirculates it back into the holding tank while it's heating up. When it gets warm, you flip the switch in there, come out the shower head, you take your shower. Now you haven't wasted water, you haven't filled up your gray tank too fast. And I think you can see in the shower here, it's actually pretty tall. I'll go ahead and step in. Uh, yeah, I'm about 5'8", but with the uh, skylight there, somebody 6'2", six, 6'3", six, could easily get in here. And then the teak seat is always a nice feature to have. Again, at 37 feet, you're, you're not going to get a real large bathroom, but you know, I like the fact that it's a center bath. They're not putting a bath and a half in here like some models. It's very practical use of space. And when you're, uh, when you're using things like this, length makes a difference, especially if you're getting off road. So I like, this is a good uh, floor plan for this length. Okay, we step back into the bedroom. I'll start up here. So you have three compartments. The one on the end over the TV is set up for your video components. Some people still might have a, a Blu-ray player or with satellites. Uh, streaming services seem to be getting a lot more popular now. This does have the, uh, the Denali Wi-Fi uh, hookup with it. On this side we've got six pull-out drawers and these are very deep. Or very tall, I guess, is the right word. That's uh, probably 11 inches or so. There's a big one, and then a couple more over here. Okay, over here, we do have a king bed under the bed. Oh, there's actually two table leafs there and two chairs with matching fabric for your dinette. 
each side of the bed on the pedestal has a little storage, but you can also see a 110 outlet and some USB ports. Now, if you're sleep, uh, sleeping with a uh, oxygen or a sleep apnea machine, you know, you've got a, a place right here you could put it. There's also plugs in the overhead compartment. You've got a little access port right here. So you could put it up here if you wanted to. Otherwise, this is a lot of storage. It's open all the way. A couple of functioning windows, which is nice when you want to get a breeze back here at night. Open these windows, turn a fantastic fan on. It really draws the air through. And then uh, back here on our back wall, we have our washer and dryer. And then we actually have a pretty good wardrobe area here, as you can see. There is a safe in there. And then we have five more little storage drawers down here. And they actually pull out quite a way. And again, all of them have the soft close feature. Like I say, same uh, pedestal with your outlets on this side. Uh, one of the things I like to point out is Numar does a great job with their air conditioning vents. Uh, their vents run right down the middle, uh, ducted AC. And if you're going to use your uh, generator in the middle of the summer, say it's July in Texas, it's 110 degrees out, and you want to cool the coach for your passengers, you can run your rooftop ACs, and this way they blow right down in the middle, as opposed to over the slides when you have the, the, uh, the air conditioning ducts mounted on the outside, and typically those are the round vents that are adjustable. So I like the, the decorative ceiling, but it's actually functional that it's in the middle and uh, a little better... Uh, use out of it on those hot days when you need it. Okay, what am I forgetting? Beautiful tile floor here. Uh, this is our vacuum setup. You can put your hose in there, sweep up to there and suck it in. Um, I guess that's about it for this one. Once again, my name's Mark Love. Please reach out if you have any questions. I think my information is there on the screen. Um, sorry once again to all my friends that went to Michigan State, but don't ever forget you'll always be the little brother. And uh, when you're traveling out there, drive careful. Happy trails, my friends, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.